Well, maybe if you didn't cry about it all the time, people would want to say hi to you. So nice. Stay out there, Abby. Go do your doggy thing. All right, let's get situated here. Hello, hello everybody. Hey, 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 hey. So, real quick, I had a friend of mine. I call her a friend. You know how you get those uh, Facebook friends, Instagram friends, where you're totally girl crushing on each other and you probably, I mean, you probably would recognize each other if you walk by in Target, but you know, she lives in a completely different state, completely different even part of the country than I do, and there's just no way we're going to accidentally run into each other, right? Like, am I the only one that has that kind of friend? Because I have like six of them. If I have one of those friends in Knoxville, I just go find them and meet them and we have lunch and then we're real friends. Okay, but I've got this friend on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I actually did a guest blog for her in January. That's how we met, um, if that's how people meet these days. And... She sent me a message today on Facebook and she was like, all right, what do you do? What exactly do you do? Because I see you're doing this and I see you're doing that and I see that you, you know, talk about real estate and you're, you know, but what do you do? Whitney? And I was like, yeah, she wants to know what I do. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a second. If she doesn't know what I do, and I feel like she and I are really good friends, like we talk a lot, we send her a lot of direct messages, like she's one of my friends. If she doesn't know what I do, then that means you don't know what I do, and that means everybody else doesn't know what I do, and I've clearly messed up my branding, okay? Because I buy houses. Whitney buys houses, okay? I buy houses. I love buying houses, okay? Um, I, I buy commercial properties too, that's fine. I'm all real estate all the time, that's why I got a radio show, all real estate all the time, okay? I am all about real estate, and so what do I do? I buy houses. So how do I buy houses? I, I do not, I'll tell you this, I do not go to the bank and get a mortgage on every single house I buy, mm -mm, not happening. I also don't flip every single house I buy, okay? In 2015, I bought 12 houses. I flipped six of them. So half the houses that I bought, and then I had a bunch of others that I accidentally sold. All right, and I'll, I'll tell you how you accidentally sell a house in a minute. But I buy houses. And I do owner financing. I do lease options. I do creative financing on all these houses that I buy so that I don't have to go to the bank. I don't have to get a mortgage. I don't have to put a bunch of earnest money down. We don't have to go through escrow. There's not um, underwriters that I have to deal with. It's just me. All right. I am a complete and total control freak. Okay. Like I am type A all the way. If I can't do it, then it's just not going to get done. And I'm going to do every single thing I can. But I found that I really like owning the property, okay? I don't, I was a listing agent for a hot minute and I was terrible at it, okay? So I don't list houses. I buy houses. I'll take an option to buy your house and I'll put it out on the market and I'll try to sell it with a lease option, okay? I'll get terms set up with you as the seller so that... Um, let's say I'm buying a house and you're selling it to me for, we'll talk about a house that I bought. Last February, I bought a house for $111,000, owner financing. I was going to pay the guy like $600 a month. Um, it was my first one, so I didn't know that I could do it with no interest. So I ended up paying him like 2%, no, I paid him 4% interest, okay? 4% interest. And my payments were right at $600 a month. And I put it out on the market. I bought it from him for 111. I put that same house back on the market for like 128, with an 850 dollar a month payment. And my payments included taxes and insurance, so I go ahead and I rolled that over to my tenant buyer, let them pay taxes and insurance, and I I bought the house. My tenant buyer, um, my seller, also because it was my first one, I didn't realize that I didn't have to put any money down because it was a pretty house. So I told my buyer that they had to put $8,000 down. I gave the seller $4,000, I kept $4,000. So I made $4,000 for buying a house. I made $4,000 for buying the house. I'm also making like $250 every month. And these people send that payment, direct deposit into my account 
every month. So I make $250. That includes my taxes and insurance. So let's use round math. I'm making $2,500, $3,000 a year off that one house just because somebody made their payments. Okay, but I told you I bought the house for $111. I gave my seller $4,000. So my balance is $107,000. Well, my buyer's balance they had it at 128. I gave them 4,000 off. The same 4,000 I gave my seller. I gave that off my buyer. They still owe me 124,000. I owe 107,000. So I made 4,000 up front. I made 3,000 over the course of a year. I'm up to 7,000. And then y'all, what's the difference between 124 and 107? 10, almost 15,000. So I am round numbers, I'm making $22,000 off this one house. I'm making $22,000 for buying a house. This is a $110,000, dollars $120,000 house, and I am clearing right at $22,000 just for buying a house. That's all I did was buy a house. So my friend asked me, Are, you know, do you work with people? on these houses do I like do I represent people and I say no that's a terrible idea in my area I could list that same house let's say I listed it for 128 as a regular agent let's say I listed it as a broker of Whitney buys houses I listed it let's say I listed it at 128 with a 10% commission and I got all 10% how much did I make $12,000 Maybe closer to $13,000, right? Except when I put it on the market last year, I couldn't find anybody to qualify for the house at 128. I found five or six people that could qualify at 128 if I gave them a year or two to fix their credit. So if I could have found somebody to buy it, I would have made $12,000, but I couldn't. So instead, I bought the house and I'm making $22,000. Yes, it took me a year, but you know what else happens in that year? I pay short-term capital gains on it. No, I'm sorry. I pay long-term capital gains on it. If I had bought it and sold it in a month, I would have paid short-term capital gains on it. But because I've had it for a year and two months now, I'm paying long-term capital gains. So at the max, short-term is probably 38%. But long-term is more like 15%. So do you want to pay 38% on a fix and flip? Or do you want to pay 15% on a long-term lease option? I would rather pay less taxes. That means I get more money, right? Yes, it took me longer to do it, but I get more money. Let's take a different scenario. So my friend asked me, you know, do I work with people? Or do I just do all this myself because I am such a control freak? Well, sometimes I find houses and the people won't do owner financing, they won't do a lease option, they won't do anything creative with me, they have to have cash, but they will take a greatly reduced price because they are taking cash. So let's take this same house. This is a fine house, this is a pretty house, this is a good house. Let's say they would have taken 60,000 for the house, cash, all in, all done, done. Well, that's when I would have taken the contract for 60000 no problem. And I, because I've been buying houses, I know people. I just kind of gather people who may or may not know what I'm doing. They may be like my friend who she knows I buy houses, but she doesn't know exactly how I buy houses. So I find these people with fifty or sixty or $70,000 in their checking account not doing anything. Right? Because if you have money in the bank right now, you're earning like less than 1% on it. At least in East Tennessee. Less than 1%. And if you have that money under the mattress, you are losing money on it every year. I don't care if you do like to look at it every once in a while. That money, if you have $60,000 under your mattress in five years, you still might have $60,000, but it's not worth $60,000 anymore. Does that make sense? It, it, it's just inflation it just it just doesn't work like that and if you have money in the bank the bank isn't issuing enough interest on your money to keep up with inflation you're losing money if it's in the bank so what i would do is i would tell my friend like my friend who called me what i told her was that let's say she had 60,000 and let's say i could have bought this house cash all in all done for 60,000 i would have taken her 60,000 bought the house so that the real estate 
is, you know, hers, it's in her name, and then I would have worked an owner financing deal out with her. So let's say I'd pay her 7% interest. Let's say I pay her 5% interest, easy numbers, 5%, $60,000 at 5%, what is that, like eight, is that 8,000? I don't know, y'all help me with math, whatever the math is, okay? Let's just call it 8,000. Well, I can say to her, look, I will give you your 60,000 back plus 5%, a year if I hold it for three years and she's thinking okay that's fine and this is easy flat percentage okay not compounding not anything weird not any amortization schedule just flat all right sixty thousand dollars is what she gave me I'm gonna give her five percent a year for three years so that when I sell this house so, okay we bought it for 60 but I've sold it for 128 clearly okay so that's sixty eight thousand dollars that I'm gonna collect when my tenant buyer gets their mortgage ready, right? $68,000. So if I am paying my girlfriend who gave me $60,000 to buy this house, 8,000 a year for three years, that's eight, 16, dollars $24,000. But I'm getting $68,000, right? So 68 minus 24, is that, what is that? Y'all tell me, how much is that? That's good, right? 68 minus 24. Yeah, that's like 44. Am I doing this right? Yeah, 44. 44,000. So who cares if I have to give my friend 24,000? All right? Who cares? She made 5% of our money. She is tickled pink because she had it in real estate. She made more than she was going to make in the bank. She made more than she was going to make in um, under the mattress. She also didn't have to worry about tenants and toilets. I did all of that. Okay, I did all of that. But let me tell you what is absolutely mind-blowing about this deal that I just explained to you. I don't owe her anything until my buyer cashes me out of this deal. But my buyer is paying me $850 every month. So let's say my buyer takes three years to do this, okay? And I'm gonna owe her, her percentage, whatever, when we get there. So in the meantime, I collected $8,000 and I didn't give that to her because I'm only giving her money when, when he cashes out, right? That's our agreement and she's fine with that. So I got 8,000 up front. I gave him 4,000 off the purchase price. He still owes me 124, right? So he's also paying me eight fifty a month. What am I gonna do with that eight fifty a month? I'm going to deposit it into Hip National Bank. And if you haven't ever been to Hip National Bank, it's amazing. There's lollipops there. They've got ice cream on a stick, popcorn all the time. Okay? So that's eight fifty a month times thirty six months. How much is that? It's like $30,000, isn't it? On top of what I'm going to get when he cashes me out. So now I'm getting $48,000 when he cashes me out because i got to pay my girl. He's given me close to $30,000 over the rent payment. Okay, I had to pay taxes and insurance out of that. So maybe I cleared $27,000. Maybe I cleared $25,000. Who cares? I got $44,000. 25,000 in rent payments and 8,000 up front. So how much did I just make on this house? I don't even know, I've got so lost in my numbers, but it's like a shit ton, y'all. All right, it's like stupid math. It's like, why would I ever list a house again if I know how to do this? And I know how in three years I can make, I mean, close to 70 grand. Yeah, it's spread out over three years. So let's let's call it 60. Let's. Easy, easy numbers. Let's say I make 60 on this house over three years. That's $20,000 a year on this house that I'm making. So how many houses do I have to buy to make a hundred grand a year? How many houses can I buy if I am not putting any money down? How many houses can I get at the bank if I'm not going to the bank? I mean, I can buy a house every week if I want to. 
And maybe my numbers aren't 77,000. Thank you, Alicia. Maybe my numbers aren't 77,000 on every single house I buy. What if I do two of those houses a year? And every other house makes me 20,000. What if I do five or six of those a year and that's all I do is buy five or six houses every year? So that's what I do. In a nutshell, that's what I do. And I'm not telling you that I make 77,000 on every house. What I will tell you is that I make 5,000 in an option fee every time I buy a house. Every time I buy a house, I make 5,000 for buying the house and putting it back on the market. I spent a week every month in Florida in 2014 learning how to do this. And God has been so good to me. All right. Um, my brother and I have, I think, 14 houses, maybe 15. We have 15 houses. Yes. And all my 15 tenants direct deposit that rent into my account every month. So today is, what is this? The 3rd of May? Okay. 3rd of May. So far, I've been on a field trip Monday with the fifth graders. We went to the Discovery Museum. And Tuesday, I went to see a play. We went and saw Shrek the Musical with the third graders. Tomorrow, I have to go to the bank, make sure everything looks cool or not, okay? The bank's next to my favorite lunch place. I just go in there and hang out. I don't have to, I just like it, all right? By the fifth, everybody's gonna have their rent paid or not, okay? If I've got 100 or $200 cushion, on everybody that makes their payment, then I'm good to go. Okay? I, I'm good to go. If Imagine I had 12 houses and I was making $100 on every house. That means I get $1,200 a month just for waking up. Let's say those 12 houses and I have a $200 cushion on every one of them. So I make $2,400 just for waking up. Okay, that's after I make my payment, after I do taxes and injured, whatever, I'm clearing 200. I make 2400 a month just for waking up. What am I going to do with the rest of the time that month? I'm going to go buy some houses. Okay, and that's what I do. I am a real estate matchmaker. I find people that have houses, and I, I find some houses that aren't that pretty. I, I like to buy ugly houses sometimes because they're fun. I can play with them. I can flip them. I can do whatever I want to with them. But I, I buy pretty houses too, okay? This uh, example, this $128,000, $110,000 house, I had an owner financing deal on it. I'm not making $77,000 on it. I'm making like $22,000 on it. Is that what we decided I was making on it? Something. I'm making more money buying houses than I could listing houses. And maybe in your market, you could make more money listing houses. Maybe that's what you want to do. That's cool. That's fine. Totally awesome. Love real estate agents. But I don't deal with real estate agents, okay? I don't ever have to figure out how much commission I'm going to owe somebody because I just don't, I don't, I don't buy from agents. In fact, if you have your house listed, don't send it to me. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to analyze it. I'm not going to make you an offer. I'm not even going to pretend I know that it's on the market because I don't need to, okay? Listen, you know what happens when a house goes on the MLS? I mean, seriously, do you know what happens to get a house on the MLS? It goes through three chains of command before it can even hit the internet. The seller, I don't care who you are, what you believe, do, or say, that seller told somebody that they wanted to sell their house before they ever called that agent. Somebody somewhere knew that that house was gonna be on the market. So it went probably through a very small circle of friends before it ever hit the agent's doorstep. Okay. Once that house hit the agent's doorstep, it went through that entire firm to see if anybody was looking for a house in this area for this price with this many bedrooms and this, that, or the other so that they could make a quick sale without having to put it out. And that way they could keep the commission in house. Nothing wrong with that. If I have a buyer and they're looking in Fountain City and you have a house and it's in Fountain City, and we can make something happen. Then let's just make something happen and make it fast. 
Okay. The third thing is, as soon as that agent gets that contract on it, even if they don't want to make a deal with somebody in the office, then they sent somebody a message that said, hey, I got a hot deal. You're going to need to watch the MLS for this. And as soon as it goes on, you need to get somebody over there and buy it because it's hot. Okay. If that house has been on the MLS, it's been on the market, it's been on the, the Zillow, the Truly, the whatever, if it's been on there for six months, it's not a hot deal, y'all. Stop advertising it as a hot deal because by the time it goes through the seller's group of friends, the broker, the firm's group of friends, and the MLS going out to everybody, every investor, everybody in the town that's looking at a house, by the time it's been through all of those three people, you're practically begging somebody to buy it. Sorry. I probably didn't make any friends there, did I? Sorry. So, anyway. My goal is not to be a listing broker, okay? I am the broker. My name is Whitney Nicely East. Um, I go by Whitney Nicely. I am the broker for Whitney Buys Houses. I'm the broker for Nicely Done Auctions. If you have a question, hold on just a second. I'm on a complete rampage here. Um, I don't list houses. I don't have to. I, I make way more money buying houses than I do listing houses, okay? So... No way I'm going to be one of those brokers who spends her whole day managing peon agents, minion agents, okay? I'm not doing it. When you think of a real estate broker, and this is my mission in life, y'all. Like, honest to goodness, this is my mission. This is what God sent me here for this. If you think of a stock broker, tell me what you think of. Just in your mind. Think of what you think of when you think of a stockbroker. Because when I think of a stockbroker, I think about my stockbroker. And every other stockbroker I've ever known, okay? He's wearing a suit and tie. He's a very sharp-dressed man. I don't think of a woman. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't. I think of somebody who is very smart, sits in a cubicle, maybe a corner office, and all he wants is my money. So when I hand him $10,000... I fully expect that he is going to invest my $10,000 in the best performing stock he can find at that time. I don't expect him to wait five or six months to figure out what's better or what's going to return more or whatever because in those five or six months, I could have made some money. Okay? So if he waited five or six months to invest my money, I would be pissed to be quite honest with you, okay? I could have made money with some other broker at that time, all right? So that's what I think of a stockbroker. They are managing my stock portfolio. And you know what stocks are? It's imaginary play money because once that money's gone, personal experience, it don't come back. You might see it on a yearly breakdown. You might see that you made 5%. You might check in with Kramer every day and, you know, see what the market's doing and all this stuff and drive yourself absolutely crazy. But to be honest, that money ain't coming back, y'all. It's not coming back. And if it does come back, you are going to pay out the tail to get it back. All right? If it comes back, it's not going to be that 10000 and it's certainly not going to be that 50000 that you imagined it would be over 10 or 15 years. All right? Warren Buffett, he's the man. And there's a reason he's the man. He's the only one that's really done this. Okay? Yeah, there's a bunch of other people that have made some money. But show me the amount of stockbrokers that have made a million bucks versus the people that invested in real estate and made a billion bucks. 80% of millionaires made their money in real estate, and there's a reason for that, okay? There's so many different ways to buy real estate. I hate it when people say, you know, especially when they watch those TV shows, oh my gosh, I hate the TV shows. Like, please stop airing them. And do not ask me if my life is really like that because my life is so much better than any TV show has ever even pretended to be, okay? So it's not like it is on TV. It's a 10 times better. It is so much more fun than it is on TV, in real life. Okay, but the stockbroker, that's what we're talking about. So I hand him my money, I expect some money back, it ain't happening. Do you know what a real estate broker should do? A real estate broker, me, Whitney Nicely, as a real estate broker, I should manage your real estate portfolio. 
That's what I should do. That should be my job. You should hand me $10,000, $50,000, and I should go put it immediately into either flipping a house, buying a house, an apartment complex, something, okay? Like my friend that I said earlier, says she gives me $60,000, I promise her 5% return. My stockbroker could promise me $8,000, that's fine, but he's going to have that, you know, thing on it that says, unless the market tanks, and then I don't owe you anything, Whip. I don't owe you anything. But if I promise my girl that I'm going to give her 5% a year, I'm going to give her 5% a year because I've already done the math. I know that maybe there's a clause in there that says, you know, if my guy doesn't cash out in three years, I'll give her 6% on the fourth year. I'll give her 7% on the fifth year, okay? There's a way to work around it. And if I'm looking at $68,000 and I got to pay her $24,000, big deal if I pay her $30,000 instead. I still made $38,000. Y'all stop crying over spilt milk. You made $38,000 for buying a house. Tell me where else you can do that for like 10 hours worth of your work. You can't, okay? So as a real estate broker, my mission in life is to get a new name for real estate brokers, okay? If you are somebody that manages minion agents and you make sure that their paperwork is right and their signs are right and they're in compliance and all this great stuff, you should be called an office manager. You should not be called a real estate broker. Every real estate broker should manage people's real estate portfolios, just like a stockbroker manages your stock portfolio. And I'm going to step down off my bucket now. <laughs> oh, that's what real estate brokers should do. I should make my money from your money being in real estate. I should have every agent in town, when they get one of those hot deals, they should call me as soon as they get that contract. And if I was a good real estate broker, I would have already turned that down. Because I am a good investor because I have formulas that I go by, because I am good at what I do. I can spot a terrible house. I can spot a terrible tenant. And I don't want that in my life, okay? I got too much fun stuff going on to deal with those issues. So I'm not going to. I screen my tenants. Like, I almost know their underwear color by the time I'm done screening them. Okay? What I do is I am a real estate matchmaker. That maybe that's what they should call brokers. Maybe brokers should sit in an office and manage peons. I'm not doing that, okay? There's a reason I don't have any agents in my company. I don't want any. I don't want to have to deal with what brokers are supposed to do. I don't want to do it. I want to work for real estate investors. I want to work with new investors, old investors, seasoned investors. If you're a landlord and you got some property you don't want it anymore, call me. I got two leads today from a very good investor in my town and they just don't want to do it anymore. They've got two or three other businesses. They just don't have time to deal with these tenants, okay? They're just annoying. They don't have time with, to deal with it. Well, just call Whitney. She buys houses. And I will. I love buying houses. I love buying houses. So, whew, I'm going to try to step off my rant. If you don't know what I do right now besides <laughs> yell and scream at people, I buy houses. That's what I do. I buy houses. I find houses that people don't want. Say they're landlords. They just don't want to deal with it anymore. Or say you have a house and you outgrew it and you had to move and you tried to list it. It wouldn't sell. It wouldn't sell. It wouldn't sell. You tried to rent it. You didn't want to be a landlord. Call me. I buy those houses all the time. Pretty houses or ugly houses. I love them all. And pretty houses, in case you don't know, that's something that I would want to live in. That's something that middle class people would want to live in. That's, you know, you could drive your new man by, you could drive your mom by, you could drive your brother by, and they will be glad that you bought that house. Ugly houses are the ones that you drive by and you're like, roll up the windows. We, we don't, we don't need, we don't, mm -mm. And there could be ugly houses in pretty neighborhoods, okay? Say somebody passed or they went to the nursing home and their house is just falling apart. The gutters are falling down, the weeds are growing up everywhere. That is an ugly house in a pretty neighborhood. Diamond in the rough. Buy the fire out of those houses, y'all. Buy those. Talk to those sellers. Talk to their heirs. Talk to the neighbors. Become a detective. Find out who owns that thing and buy it because all the other neighbors will be thrilled you bought the ugly house in the neighborhood because their home value just went up tremendously. <laughs> tremendously. <laughs> I can't even talk now. Go buy some houses. 
If you want to be a real estate agent, cool. But buy some houses with your big commission checks. Because when you're getting a $12,000 commission check, I'm getting 25 on the same house. I'm doubling down your commission check over time, which means I'm paying less taxes in it. I'm building up my portfolio so that I can go buy something bigger because I own 12 or 15 houses. Buy one house a month. Ain't a big deal. You, you could, if I wanted to, if I wanted to hustle, hustle, hustle really, really hard, I could buy a house a week. Probably wouldn't sleep. <laughs> I wouldn't go to the gym. wouldn't do a lot of other different fun things that I like to do. But I could totally buy a house a week. So finally, what do I do? I buy houses, but I also teach people how I buy houses. I teach you how you can buy a house. If you've got $50,000, you ought to be able to turn that into 200 in three houses, less than three houses, okay? You can pay me, you can give me that money and I'll get you five or six or 8% on it, fine, cool, whatever. But I'm gonna be making money on your money. Why don't you just figure out how to use your money to double down on it? I'm not advertising for money. I'm advertising that you should be buying houses. Everybody should have a real estate portfolio. I especially think women should have a real estate portfolio. Man, I am really preaching today. Okay, women should have a real estate portfolio for two reasons. One, it's scientifically proven that we're gonna live longer. I'm gonna outlive my husband. One, because I'm younger and feistier than he is, but two, because he eats bad and he's just gonna die before me. I'm sorry, babe, love you. You're gonna die before me, okay? Most men are gonna die before their spouse. So if we're going to be living longer, reason two we need a real estate portfolio is because we're going to spend more money. Even if we spend equal amounts up until the point that he dies, I'm going to spend more money. Okay? But to be honest, I'm going to spend more money today than he is. Because I am the gatherer. Okay, I go to the grocery store. I go to Target and get stuff we need. I shop on Amazon and get the birthday stuff and the Mother's Day presents and the uh, you know mother-in-law presents, her birthday presents, my mom's presents. I make sure that all of that's going, right? I am the one that's gonna buy the class t-shirt. I am the one that's just gonna spend more money, okay? I just, I spend more money than my husband does. Now, my dad, my brother, my husband, all the men in my life, they spend pretty good money but not as much as my mom and I spend on a regular basis just because we shop more. I go to Lowe's more, okay? I go, I get the pretty stuff. My husband would never think about going to get, well, he might, but you know, a lot of men wouldn't think to go get new flowers every season and put them out so the house looks pretty. Women do that. We go, we, we like tulips, we're gonna plant in the fall so they bloom in the spring. We gotta put more stuff out in the spring so it'll bloom in the fall, okay? Men just don't think like that. We spend more money. So if we're going to spend more money, we need to be making more money. And since we spend more time in family situations, we need to be making more money in our sleep. Last time I checked, the best way to get the biggest return on money is real estate. Okay, I went on a field trip yesterday and today. And all day while I was out, I was getting messages from the bank that deposits had been made into my various accounts. I was getting texts from tenants that said, hey, I put my money in. I was getting emails from people. The bank was sending me emails saying, hey, we got more money from so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. I made money being on the field trip with the kids. So if I have not convinced you that you need to be a real estate investor, then watch this again. <laughs> But if you are sure that you're ready to be a real estate investor, my website is WhitneyNicely.com. I will, I, I just started ranting. I didn't even, see, I had to put my hair up. I was getting so flustered. But um, I buy houses. I flip them. I keep them. I make money on them. And I make good money. So if you're ready for this, sign up for my coaching program. WhitneyNicely.com. If you want to, you can send me an email. Somebody on here earlier asked a question, and I was way too deep in the weeds to uh, focus on the question. So if you would email me info at WhitneyNicely.com. If you have any friends, if you haven't shared this yet, everybody needs a real estate portfolio and you need to share this immediately. I'm gonna go, my doggy's ready to come back in. I am off my soapbox, 
proceed with your day, but please go buy some real estate. Please go buy some real estate. I'll teach you how to do it so that you don't lose any money, so that you can make five or 10,000 for buying a house. Not that you're gonna pay out five or 10,000 for buying a house. Oh, no, 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 no. You're gonna make five or 10,000 minimum. Your market, you may make 50,000 every time you buy a house, I don't know. In my market, I make five to 10,000 every time I buy a house. So how many of those do you need to do every month before you replace your nine to five? How many of those do you need to do every month before you stop listing houses and start buying houses? <laughs> Agents get on my nerves. <laughs> yeah, I can help you in LA. You'll be probably more like 50,000 every time you buy a house. Uh, I got a friend, Alton Jones. He's somewhere in California and oh my gosh, he is killing it. Killing it. He's amazing. Totally cool. So anyway, my website, WhitneyNicely.com. I've got a uh, radio show thing tonight. Um, all the personalities, and since I'm a personality on the radio now, um, I got tickets. I got personality tickets. Not like regular tickets, like station tickets. Yeah. <laughs> So mom and I are going to do that tonight. I hope y'all have a great night. Please watch my rant. Please check out WhitneyNicely.com and email me info at WhitneyNicely.com if you have any questions. And go ahead and share this so all your buddies can experience my rant of the day. <laughs> Bye y'all. If you have any questions about what I do, I will try to explain it again in a calmer manner. But basically what I do is buy houses and make money. My mom's calling me now. My date's calling me, so I gotta go. Bye, y'all.